Hello everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R, Part 9, Factors. Now at the end of the last lesson on data frames, we learned that when you load character data into a data frame, by default, it is converted into a data type called a factor. So in this lesson, we're going to learn more about what factors are. Factors are essentially a special data type designed to hold ca categorical data. And what a factor does is it takes a categorical vector and assigns each unique value a different level that is uh, an integer index. So, for instance, if you were to pass in a character vector with only two unique values, such as male and female, and you gave it to the, vec the factor function, which creates a factor from the vector, the levels for that factor would just be assigned the first two integers, 1 and 0. In this code cell here, we're showing an example of that. So we're creating a vector of different gender values. So we're just repeating male and female a few times. And then we're creating a new factor from that with the factor function. So we're passing that vector in, and we're just going to print and see what the resulting factor looks like. You can see it is a factor with the levels female and male. Now you can specify specific levels for the factor with the levels argument when you create it. So for instance, this construction, we're creating the same factor from that vector, but we're also specifying we want the levels to be male, female, and other. We're not actually passing in any values of other, but this construction allows for there to be perhaps new values added that have this category, even though it's not being used. So if we run that, we can see this new factor level other has been added there. Now to check the different categorical levels of a factor, you use the levels function. So here we're using levels and we're passing in the factor we just made to check the levels that are available, male, female, and other. Now, you can also change the levels after the factor has been created. To do that, you use the levels function, but then afterwards you use the assignment operator to assign the new levels. So here we're using levels, then we're assigning new factor names, male, female. Those are both the same, but this last one, unknown, is different. So we're changing other to unknown, essentially, and then we're going to look at it again. You can see that that level has been changed successfully. And again, after a vector has been created, you can also add new levels using the, the same construction. So here we're assigning new levels, the same ones we did before, male, female, and unknown, and then another level called no response. After we run that, the no response level has been added. Now you can remove factor levels that don't have any actual data present for them um, by recreating the factor with the factor function, or you can use drop levels. And drop levels will just discard any categories that don't actually have any data entries for them. So here we're doing, we're resaving our factor and we're saving it as drop levels of this factor function. So this will drop any unused levels, which both unknown and no response are unused. So both of those should be um, gotten rid of here. So we're left with two. R also offers a second factor data type called the ordered factor for ordinal data. Ordinal data is non-numeric data that actually has some sense of ordering from like low to high is an easy example. So for instance, if you had a questionnaire with categories ranging from very low, low, medium, high, very high, that would be considered an ordinal categorical variable because low is below medium high and very high so there's some sense of scale or ordering to it so if you want to make an ordinal factor when you create the factor you just add this extra argument here ordered equals true so here we're pass we're making a new vector of some data with some different ordered levels we're saying we want to make a new factor from it from that data the levels are these, and we want it to be ordered. So when we do that and we print it, you can see when you do an ordered factor, in when it shows the levels, 
it shows that very low is less than low is less than medium etc so it shows you the the order as well as the levels um you can convert data that is in a factor back to character using the uh, as dot character function so if we run as dot character on this gender factor we'll just get back a character vector with all the values and in some cases this may be what you want when you load in data frames so in that case you pass the strings as factors equals false argument when you construct the data frame um, you can also convert a factor to numeric if you happen to have numeric values in a factor for some reason but when you do this we'll run it here when you do this you're actually given the index values the integer index values instead of whatever actual numeric values might be stored there so here we're given one 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 because male is associated with the first index value one and then all these twos are all the female so if you have numeric data in a factor and you actually want to get the numeric values out and not these indices um, there's a couple of different ways you can do that this code block is showing how to do that so we're storing a factor with some numeric values this time and to get those out you can use this construction um, you basically take the levels you convert that to numeric and then you use the original factor itself as an index and that will allow you to get those values back um, another way to do this is actually to first use as dot character to convert all those numbers into their character representations and then just use as not dot numeric on that um, that also works it's probably easier to understand than this but it might run a little slower so probably not going to matter in most applications so this might work just fine but we'll just run this and show that these both will get your original numeric values back here there they are so if you want to add new values to an existing factor you can't just use the c function like you would with a normal vector so one way that you can add new values to a factor is just convert it back to whatever the base data type was concatenate on whatever the new values are and then turn it back into a factor so that's what we're doing in this construction here we're saying as that character on our factor so that turns it into a character we're using c to add on or combine on some new values unknown unknown prefer not to say and then that's all wrapped in this as dot factor call or we could have just used factor two but uh, that will turn this whole thing back into a factor with these new categories added let's run that show a summary so you can see we have our original values here but we also have these extra categories that have a couple entries for them now factors support many of the same indexing operations that we've learned before they're essentially vectors which with each value being an integer paired with some character that specifies the name of the factor level so you can use the indices to get out elements just like you would with a normal vector so for instance just putting two in there we'll get the second element of the factor the colon construction will take a slice passing in a vector we'll get a selection of specific elements and a logical operation we'll just get all values that meet that criteria so in this case we're getting all the entries where the value equals male run that and there are also some summary functions and helper functions you can use on factors that can be useful so if you run the summary function we learned about that last time for data frames but if you run it on a factor it just returns counts for each level of the factor so that can just be an in easy way to s summarize counts 
You can also use the str or structure function on a factor. That shows you just a general high level overview of the factor's size and levels. So it's showing us it's a factor with four levels. It's showing us the first few levels here and then the typical values or indices here. Summary is probably more useful than stir for factors. You can also just get the length with length, same thing as a normal vector. And you can also use the table function. So table will just create a little data, data grid showing entries for each value. So we'll run that. It's, it's very similar to the summary, really, at least in for a normal factor. But uh, it can be another quick way of summarizing categories. Factors and ordered factors can be useful because many of the statistical predictive modeling and graphing operations in R are set up so that they recognize factors and then handle them as categorical data. But they're not super easy to manipulate by hand. So if you're trying to clean data, it's usually better to have all your data just as atomic data types like character vectors before you might later convert them into factors for doing other things. And now that we've learned about all the different atomic data types and compound data types that we need to know about, we'll get into other operations for doing data science and analytics. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn about how to read and write data with R. See you next time.